Hey, I'm Chris, and this is MMA for You. I'm going to be doing my predictions for Bellator 143, Davis vs. Warren, which happens on September 25th. But before I get into that, I'd like to plug my friend's website. Uh, his name's Nathan Wolf. He's a graphic designer, and you can uh, reach him at uh, see his site at www.wolfhaas.design, and he can help you with all of your graphic design needs. On to the card. Um, I'm not going to lie. I kind of like the prelims better than the undercard or than the main card. Um, Damian Caldwell versus Sean Bunch. I'm really high on Darren Caldwell. Glaristone Santos makes his UFC or Bellator debut against John Macapa Teixeira, and Macapa is really good. Um, Steve Garcia is fighting. He's actually not a bad prospect. I mean the main card's not too bad. Warren's fighting, but he can he can put out grinders. Grove versus Baltran's interesting, but like and I suppose it does bring have meaning to the Bellator's middleweight division. Once again, they're not young prospects. Corrales versus Sanchez, it's alright. Um, once again, they're both coming off losses, one to Daniel Strauss, one to Pat Curran. And they're prospects, but they're not like, you know, these aren't blue chip prospects or anything like that. Uh, Queros versus Ayrton Teixeira, though, that should be interesting. Um, nice heavyweight fight. Uh, Queros is actually a pretty underrated heavyweight, and Teixeira has that kickboxing background as well. Um, let's just get started. And the main card, main event, we have L.C. Davis versus Joe Warren. Joe Warren has a 12-4 and four record, three wins by K.O. Tico, one win by Sub. He also has two losses by K.O. Tico and two losses by Sub, 38 years old. He's a former Bellator featherweight and bantamweight champion. He has Olympic-level Greco-Roman wrestling with good top control. His ground and pound's good. He's more of a stay-busy type of... Um, top control ground and pound guy it's not like his ground and pound is fight ending but he stays busy enough to stay on top to win rounds he has a really good clinch game his stand up is getting better he does have some power in his strikes his biggest problem would be stand up defense excuse me it's really bad this guy gets hit clean and hard in just about every fight he's in and his submission defense really isn't very good. He has a way of... There are certain fights where he... I remember he got armbarred, he got guillotined or triangle choked. And like he just kind of muscles and powers out of them. That didn't work against Marcus Galvo, who got that uh, nifty uh, knee bar on him and made him scream. L.C. Davis, 23-6 and six record, 8 wins by K.O. Tico, 7 wins by Sub. He also has 2 losses by submission. 34 years old, on a 3-fight win streak, training out of ATTHD. Uh, he's a good wrestler, really good scrambler too. He, he's really right at home at 135. If he wants to play a top control game, he can. And stand-up's actually pretty decent. He's a pretty just well-rounded fighter, you know. His last fight against... Um, by a Japanese fighter. I totally forgot who it was, and it was a totally fun fight. Good fight. Tough to say who won that one. Um, as far as this fight goes, you do have two wrestling-based fighters, so this should be interesting in that sense. Um, I think Warren's probably going to be the favorite, and for good reason. He's fought... Both have fought some pretty high-level competition. Um... Warren's a little more relentless about getting the takedown, but he leaves himself open to get hit. His defense isn't very good. Um, and Davis is just, he's good everywhere, but he's not great at any one aspect of MMA. Like, you know, he's a really tough out for a lot of guys. Um, with that said, I am going to go with Joe Warren to win this one by decision. Not con, not... I can see the upset happening though, because like I said, L. C. Davis he's a good wrestler. I can see him defend takedowns, and a lot of people have better stand up than Joe Warren. L. C. Davis, I think, 
nothing fancy. Just he has a good, solid, you know, striking game. You know, it's not not great, but it's not bad either. You know, it, it's just solid. Whereas Warren, like I said, defensively needs a lot of work. So I can see Warren actually having a hard time taking Davis down and keeping him down. However, he does have a style that does always push forward. He can also kill time by uh, leaning up against Davis against the cage. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll tend to, I'm going with Joe Warren by decision. Um, like I said, I see upset potential there though. If I don't look at odds, I'm assuming Joe Warren's going to be the favorite though. Next fight is that Joey Mexicutioner Beltran fights Kendall the Spider Grove. Grove, 21 and 15 record with one no contest. Five wins by KRTK, 10 wins by sub. He also has seven losses by KRTK and three losses by sub. 32 years old. He's going to be a, the taller fighter at 6'6. He's trading losses and wins right now. Most recently losing to Brandon Halsey. He is an ultimate fighter winner. I want to say season three, if I'm not mistaken. At his best, his Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu game is really good. He's good off his back. He'll throw triangles and arm bars. And on top, he's also very good. Takes a back wall. Um, his Muay Thai game is actually, offensively, his striking's solid. He, you know, he punches well. He's really good knees. His problem is his defense isn't very good. His chin, and of course, his chin isn't very good. He is a guy that does get dropped a um, good amount of times. And his takedown defense actually needs some work. Joey Beltran, 16-11 record with one no contest. 11 wins by K.O. Tico, 2 wins by Sub. 3 losses by K.O. Tico, 33 years old. He's 6-1, training out of Alliance. The heart of Beltran's game is pushing forward and being a brawler. Um, he does have a good chin to support that style. Um... But his overall defense isn't very good. He's actually not a bad wrestler, too, surprisingly. Both offensively and defensively. Um, he's not bad. It's not like he can take him down at will. And he actually does have... has shown in the past a bit... Of, a couple... I remember a few fights where he has shown offensive takedown ability as well. If Beltran were a bit more heavy-handed... Um, because he's not like the super heavy handed guy. I'd probably favor him to win. But I think Grove is also just a more well rounded guy. And I kind of wonder how Beltran's going to handle the reach of Grove. Um, so right now I'm going to go with Kendall Grove uh, by either decision or submission, even. Um, Beltran at 185. You know, he's finding some life there. He beat Brian Rogers. But um, Grove, for all of his faults, he's still a good fighter, you know. And he's still a very tricky fighter as well. So, and I also think on a technical level, Grove is better. Like his stand is better, his ground is better. So, Kettle Grove, I'll go by decision. Next fight that, Henny Corrales fights Emmanuel Sanchez. Interesting fight because um, Cor Corrales lost by to Daniel Strauss, and Emmanuel Sanchez most recently lost to Pat Curran. Um, both are very similar guys. Corrales twelve and one record, four wins by KO Tico, six wins by sub. Twenty nine years old, you know, stand up's not too bad. He can wrestle a bit, you know. Um, he didn't look too bad against Strauss. He just looked really inexperienced against Strauss, against that level of competition. Um, same with Sanchez, actually. He, he he hung in there against Pat Curran. He, you know, Sanchez has a 10-2 and two record, one win by KO, five wins by sub, 25 years old, training out of Rufus Sport. Same with him. You know, stand-up's not that bad. He can wrestle a bit. His overall grappling game's good. Um, so this one's hard to say because they're both prospects, you know, one has 13 fights, one has 12. Um, Cross is the more potent finisher. Um, so, this one's tough to say. I kind of liked what I saw out of Corrales a little more, actually, than Sanchez. Um, 
Sanchez, like both of these guys look like solid but not spectacular in a sense, but um, I thought Carras ha had the better athleticism, I guess, is what I'd say. Um, and of course, he's also one to look more for the finish, so I'll go with Henry Corrales to win this one. Um, not my decision, I guess. Uh, I don't know. Next one after that, Venetius Queros fights Ayrton Teixeira. Teixeira, 3-0 undefeated record. One win in MMA, pro MMA. He has one win by KO and one, two wins by decision. 33 years old. He's going to be a shorter fighter at 6-1. He last fought on, in pro MMA back in April 2013. His game, I mean, obviously he's most well known for fighting and kickboxing. Um, Carrera, 7-3 record. Six wins by KRT, one win by Sub, 32 years old. He's 6-7, training out of Team Nogares, training wins and losses, most recently beating... Um, LeVar Johnson by knockout. He last fought in October 2013. And his stand-up's actually pretty good. He is pretty heavy-handed. And actually, his grappling actually isn't that bad either. Um, he does have some offensive takedown ability. But yeah, on the ground, he's really not that bad. I want to actually say he's like a, a brown belt or something like that. Um, with that said, tough for me to call because... If it stays standing, you know, I got a favor to share. The height advantage is kind of interesting. But I kind of wonder if Carlos is just going to try and even just take the fight to the ground. I think he'd be able to, and I don't know how good Teixeira is on the ground. So I'm going to go Venetius Carlos by submission, actually. I think he has a, that one win is actually by, an, that one submission win is actually by an armbar, if I'm not mistaken. Not mistaken. You know, Kraus has just been fighting more MMA, you know, and he knows how, you know, he's more experienced in the cage fighting MMA. To share a 3 0 undefeated in MMA, he doesn't have a lot of MMA experience, good kickboxing experience, but not a lot of MMA experience. I think that experience is just going to show, so Kraus for the win there. And I think I pronounce his name all, wrong all the time. <laughs> On the prelims, Ryan Couture fights Nick Gonzalez. Gonzalez, 18 and 12 record with one no contest. Six wins by Kortiko, three wins by sub, two losses by Kortiko, five losses by sub. 34 years old on a two-fight losing streak. He's only won two of his last six fights. I have not watched video of Nick Gonzalez, or if I have, I don't remember him. Ryan Couture, 10 and 3 record, one win by Tico, six wins by sub, 33 years old. And a four-fight win streak, all of those wins being by rear naked choke, training out of extreme couture. Name of his game is his Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu game. His wrestling isn't too bad. I'd say he's more of an average wrestler, but he can wrestle a bit. Yeah, or he can take guys down. His back control. When he takes a back, he really shines there. His stand-up, average at best. You know, definitely not his strength. So... You have a guy who's like a point five hundred fighter. Twelve, five of his twelve losses are by submission. Six of of Ryan Couture's wins are by sub. You know, kind of a setup fight in my opinion. That's what it looks like. Ryan Couture by submission. Next fight is that Dan Charles fights Chase Gormley. Charles nine and three record. Five wins by KO Tico. Two wins by sub. Has his three losses by K.R. Tico, 29 years old. Stands at 6-2. Um, did he last fight, right? Bobby Lashley, was it? He actually fought in Bellator recently, I forgot. I think it was Lashley and he lost by K.R. Tico, if I'm not mistaken. Gormley, 12-4 record with one no contest. Uh, four wins by K.R. Tico, two wins by Sub. Has his three losses by K.R. Tico, 6-3 on a five-fight win streak. Name of Gormley's game really is his wrestling and grappling. He's a good wrestler. He can stay on top control. His stand up isn't that great. His chin's not that great. But, you know, if he can take you down, he's relatively. He's decent at keeping you there. There. <laughs> at there. So, with that said, Chase Gormley by decision. Next fight, that Sean Bunch fights Darian Caldwell. 
bunch, 4 and one record, one win by TKO, three wins by decision, 32 years old. He's going to be the shorter fighter at 5'5", five five. he's on a two-fight winning streak, trains out of AKA. He has a lot of good wrestling credentials, so he is a pretty strong wrestler. Let's find Darian Caldwell. He has a 7-0 and undefeated record, one win by TKO, two wins by sub, 27 years old. He's going to be 5'10", trains out of power MMA. I really, I am really high on Darren Caldwell. He most recently beat Rafael Silva. He utilizes strong wrestling. He's, he has good top control, good ground about, and he's a strong scrambler too. He's a hard guy to out hustle. You know, if you think you're on top of him, all of a sudden he's going to end up on top. Stand up is still a work in progress. I got to go with Caldwell to win this one. Um, maybe even by KRTK. He's just going to be the bigger fighter. I mean, he's pretty big at 135. Bunch, I want to even say he can probably cut to 125. Um, and Caldwell has just been beating the better level of competition at this point. He's younger. Darren Caldwell, I'll go by KRTK here. Next fight after that should be a fun one. Glarson Santos fights John Macapa Teixeira. Santos, 27-4 record, 9 wins by KRTK, 6 wins by sub. He also has 2 losses by submission. 27 years old on a 9-fight win streak. Training out of Brazilian top team. Um, I like his stand-up game. You know, I actually saw one of his fights in Brazil. He knocked a dude out. He's really heavy-handed. And then I watched his fight against Alvin Robinson where he actually took the fight. The fight mainly took place on the ground with him on top. He is heavy-handed. Um, his gr overall grappling ability and his top control wasn't too bad, and his ground and pound actually didn't look too bad. John Macapa Teixeira, 18 and one record with two draws, four wins by Kotiko, ten wins by sub, 28 years old, three fight win streak, training out of Nobu Niao. He is a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt and real crafty on the ground too, by the way. And his Muay Thai is actually pretty solid. He's got a pretty good chin on him too. Um, real tough fight for me to call actually I've been pretty high on John Teixeira ever since he fought in the first season of Ultimate Fighter Brazil um, I always thought he would um, he has a lot of fights on his belt now so does Santos I mean you can one's 27 one's 28 but like it's hard to really call him prospects at this point just because they have so many fights um, like I said, I think that Santos should have the better stand-up game. He can be a bit wild, though, Santos. But Teixeira is actually a really more controlled fighter, both standing and on the ground. Um, so this one's really hard for me to say. I'll go with Glarison Santos to win this one. Um, definitely a fight to to keep an eye out for. Like I said, I'm. I've been pretty high on John Teixeira for a while. He only has one loss, and that was to Hugo Viana. When Hugo Viana was still really raw, but like really good, and not the guy he is today, who like has a really disjointed game. Um, well, he is all right, like Hugo Viana. Um, but yeah, I'll go with Santos to win this one. Um, I don't know if he'll get the knockout or the sub, so I'll go by decision. Like I said, Teixeira's got a good chin, and he's very good on the ground. Um, like I said, um, I can see Teixeira winning this one, though, too. He He's just a good, solid fighter. I can maybe get a, maybe get a sub or something on Santos. He's really crafty on the ground, but Santos by decision, possibly by KRT go. Tough for me to say. Next fight after that, haven't seen any videos of these guys. Jose Flores fights Guillermo Gonzalez. Gonzalez 1-0 as a pro with that one win being by TKO. Flores 3-0 as a pro with all three wins being by first round sub and he's 27 years old. Going to go with Jose Flores for the win there. Next fight is that Jared Chaffee fights Guillermo Farias da Costa. Uh, da Costa 5-0 undefeated record, one win by TKO, three wins by sub, training out of ATT. Chaffee, four and one record, one win by TKO, one win by sub at thirty years old. I'll go with Guillermo uh, Farias da Costa or da Costa. 
uh, for a win there. Have not seen video of those guys. Uh, same with these guys. Have not seen videos of them. Uh, Abdul Razak Al Hazan fights Abram Torres. Torres, 3-3 three three record. Two wins by sub. Um, one win by decision. Oh, my bad, my bad. Abdul Razak Al Hazan fights Bryce Mejia. Or Mejia. I think it's Mejia. Uh, Mejia, 3-0 and undefeated record. One win by KO, two wins by sub. He's never been past the first round as a pro. One red flag with him, he's only fought on Explode Fight Series. And if anyone knows Explode Fight Series and Gladiator Challenge, they're well known for can crushing. Abdul Razak Al Hazan, 3 0, undefeated record, with all three wins being by first round KO or TKO. He's 30 years old. I'm going to go with Abdul Razak Al Hazan. Next, right at that, Dan Cervantes fights Abram Torres. Abram Torres, 3-3 three three record, 2 wins by sub, 1 win by decision. All, th all 3 of his losses are by submission. He's 32 years old on a 2-fight losing streak. Dan Cervantes, 2-3 record, 1 win by TKO, 1 win by decision, 3 losses by sub, 33 years old. Both these guys don't have great resume, you know, the records don't look that great. I haven't seen video of them. Coin flip, Abram Torres for the win. Next round of that, Amador Ramirez fights Saul uh, Elizondo. Elizondo, 6-5 and five record, 4 wins by sub, 2 wins by decision. Has 2 losses by K.O. Tico, 30 years old, on a 2-fight losing streak. Ramirez, 4-4 four and four record, 1 win by Tico, 2 wins by sub. With all 4 of his losses by submission, 25 years old, on a 2-fight losing streak. Haven't seen video of these guys. I'll go Saul Elizondo for the win there. And finally, Eduardo Bustillos fights Steve Garcia. Bustillos, 4 and 1 record, 1 win by TKO, 3 wins by sub. Has his 1 loss by sub, 20 years old, never been past the second round. Steve Garcia, 5 and 0, undefeated record, 4 wins by KO TKO, 1 win by decision, 23 years old. He has a notable win over Sean Bunch, or I believe he knocked him out, if I'm not mistaken. Um, his standout's really wild, but he is pretty heavy handed. Um, I'm going to go with Steve Garcia to win this one by KO or TKO. Okay, to recap, the main card I have Joe Warren over L.C. Davis, Kendall Grove beating Joey Beltran, Henry, Henry Corrales over Emmanuel Sanchez, and Vinicius Cuerras beating Ariton Teixeira. On the prelims, Ryan Couture over Nick Gonzalez, Chase Gormley over Jan, Dan Charles, Darian Caldwell over Sean Bunch, Glariston Santos beating John Teixeira, Jose Flores over Guillermo Gonzalez, Guillermo Vargas da Costa over Derek Chaffee, Abdul Razak Al Hazan beating Bryce Mejia, Abram Torres over Dan Cervantes, Saul Elizondo over Amador Ramirez, and Steve Garcia beating Eduardo Bustillos. So that's it for my predictions for Bellator 143, Davis vs. Warren. If you have any comments, just leave them below. That's it for MMA for you. Thank you guys very much.